Welcome back. I didn't think this was gonna be my next video after not posting anything for so long, but I guess it has to be. I made a video that included this person a while ago, but I didn't mention her username because it didn't feel right to be talking about a 10 year old in a way that could have had people going after her. But the problem has been going on for so long, and she's been on a downward spiral into obsession and mania, to the point where I'm genuinely concerned for her own mental health. And I really do think she needs help. I know you're watching this lilac path, and if you're not gonna watch the rest of the video, just please listen when I say that you seriously need therapy. You're still a child, you are still in school. Talk to your school counselor about your mania. I understand how stressful it is to reach out for help, but after seeing all this going down, you really need to get off the internet for your own sanity. Venting and attacking people and pretending like you're 13 to sign up for social media for teenagers isn't going to help you. Get help, talk to a counselor, get therapy. You can't see your own insanity, but we do. I do. And I need you to get help. Anyways, who is Lilac Path? She's one of my fans on Scratch and originally was just a kid who drew fan art. She was maybe 9 or 10 when I first remember seeing her. I had drawn her a profile picture of Lydon because Lydon was her favorite Pokemon. At first she acted like a casual child fan, a bit obsessive, but I was her age once and I completely understand doing generally creepy things to older people. So I didn't really care about the borderline sketchy things she said until she leaked my full name on Wiki Fandom. What really creeped me out was how she got it in the first place. I had always gone by a cover name online because I didn't like my legal name. So the only public place I could think of where she would have gotten my legal name would be my mom's Facebook account. And just by that, a 9 or 10 year old stranger looking at my mom's, who I rarely talk to by the way, social media for personal information about me was super stalkery. Then to dox me on some fandom page without my permission was really unnecessary and illegal in most jurisdictions. After this, I started taking notice of all her problematic actions. I will try to go through everything through categories, but a lot of things tie together, and I don't want to go too out of order because her downward spiral is really confusing as it is. Before I start with anything, I have to mention that English isn't Lila Pass' first language, so I'm not going to pick on her grammar mistakes and neither should anyone looking through the screenshots. She is also 10 years old in most of these screenshots. This is important for all the social media I'll be branching off into. To start the weirdness mild, there was a point where I had just started coding over borders and I strictly wanted it to be off of scratch. It was a download only game at the moment and not coded as JavaScript yet. This meant that anyone with download would be able to upload the project and claim it as their own. But due to Scratch team rules, since the project wasn't ever shared on Scratch, even if the code was Scratch code, it would be violating the guidelines. Lilac Path did download the project and uploaded the game as her own a few times. These were probably taken down as they were against the copyright guidelines, but there are a few projects where she still uses sprites from the game that are still up, even though the copyright notice that comes with the download says very blatantly not to upload anything onto Scratch. She ignores this, of course. Though it currently has credit, the comments on this project shows that it originally didn't credit me for the art, and someone had to call her out on it. She also ignores the copyright notices with the other download-only project I made during my ban that was an Among Us parody and straight up uploads the project and recolors it. This also has a copyright warning she ignored. She tends to have trouble with crediting art she uses. In the Among Us game, she ripped and recolors. Yes, she credits me, though I prefer if my off-scratch projects remained off-scratch, but she also credits Cat1657 for some reason. These projects were her older ones when she used to steal art a lot, but she doesn't do that as often, which is pretty good. I still would like to go over these, since it does get worse from the usual art theft. Here are a few projects with the normal, using art and not giving credit to the artist. This one does have credit, but it's to two other people. Next we go off of scratch to a magma Lilac hosted, where she, or someone else, 
just copied and pasted a screenshot of my art, then posted the whole banner on pixel art without credit to me or anyone who collaborated. There was another project that was shared on TikTok that was a code theft of another user I was talking to. J.E. Doggo created an animation meme-like animation as a birthday present. It was very personal and they have told me that they were very upset to find out that Lilac Path had taken their code to use it as a gift for Micah Kit and didn't credit them whatsoever. Whenever the code theft was brought up to Lilac on TikTok and Scratch, she deleted all those comments. Both were eventually taken down. I noticed that there was a burst of scratchers uploading AI art as their own art once the generators became more accessible. Lilac Path was one of them. She claimed to have drawn a bunch of Westwood's profile picture fan art. Someone in the comments did have to call her out on stealing art in order for her to finally credit using AI. Even then, she claims that AI doesn't steal art when it does. The most ironic part about this section is that in her information project, she tells others not to steal her art and to credit her, but she goes and does the same thing. This hypocrisy doesn't just extend to this. She's a hypocrite for many other things and attacks other users for what she also does. Lilac Path is from Serbia, and I had to look it up because I wasn't sure, but homosexuality is illegal there. Scratch is also hosted in the United States where discrimination isn't allowed, and it's stated in its terms of use that homophobia, along with other things, aren't tolerated. So signing up for the website means that she has to obey by the rules. Meanwhile, she's been making a lot of people uncomfortable with her homophobia and transphobia. She seems to use labels that she doesn't know the definition of and refuses to change them when people are offended by her fake sexualities. One that's more funny than offensive is when she claims to be a lesbian, which is fine, but then throws in the lesbian without surgery singer and the idea of being surgically lesbian has kind of become a bit of a joke. Also in this image and in other images that feature a pride flag, she uses the wrong order for the colors. I get that all the pride flags having different colors could be confusing, but Google exists for a reason. And though I find the Franken flags funny, some people could see it as a mockery, especially since it's next to her claiming that she's not surgically lesbian. Lilac likes Pokemon, and she likes Incineroar a little too much, but I'll get into that later. In this vent project, she is upset about people making ship art of certain Pokemon that spawn mostly male in the games. The way she makes this discovery in Gatekeep's shippers makes it seem very homophobic. She does seem to think that every Pokemon species is just one singular Pokemon for some reason, so her being upset about people shipping male Pokemon together is pretty gross. She also throws in that she's sad that Primarina and Meowskarata aren't female. For context, these two Pokemon have stereotypically female attributes, so to any bystander, it seems like she's saying that female Pokemon have to look female and male Pokemon have to look male. It's a bit sexist, in my opinion. During the video I mentioned at the beginning, I mentioned one of Lilac's alt accounts. I also mentioned that Overboarders used to be named Pretty Random Things before it got its official title. One of these titles was Eat Sand. This was when it was only on YouTube and not published to play yet. Lilac Path at the time was very active on my YouTube and continuously asked about the game on my Scratch profile. One day, a new account popped up called Eat Sand, who typed exactly like Lilac would. Lilac was also having beef with Autumn Caddo at the time, so it was more proof that this new account was her, because she mentioned in her bio that she would be hacking Autumn Caddo's account. This account also decided to call me girly when I'm openly transmasculine and go by he, they pronouns. It's all on my bio, and Lilac knows what I go by, so her saying that was very transphobic. There wasn't exact proof that this person was Lilac, not until she outed herself in the video comments. She claimed that it was actually her cat that typed and sent the transphobic comment. Someone tried to give her the benefit of the doubt and deduce that Lilac probably meant that it was a text-to-speech error. But then Lilac comes out and says that no, she meant that her cat literally wrote out the message. Later on, the incident was mentioned on the Westwoods wiki, and Lilac changed her story, saying that it was actually her brother who typed the comment. Then in the same thread said that a hacker typed it and oddly added on that her 
eyes were tricking her. So her entire explanation was confusing from start to finish. But all we know is that all her excuses weren't justifying her transphobia. There's more to the homophobia and transphobia, but it will come with her shipping herself with an incineroar. It's a whole different rabbit hole. Lilac used to be a compulsive liar. She might have gotten better at not lying every other comment, but I haven't talked to her in who knows how long, so I'm not sure. She has claimed that she was at the alt of someone's account only for that person to reply to her that she wasn't. Then with her actual alt, she claimed that it wasn't her, only to use it to be transphobic. I don't have too much of the lying here because they're mostly tied in with the other categories, but I had to throw this in here to explain some of her weird comments. I once asked Scratch Team if age was ever a factor in banning Scratchers, and they said no, but after seeing everything that Lilac had done, and her never being permanently banned for the things she did, while I get perm banned for things I do on Discord is very suspicious. One of the tame rules she broke was going around the Aggie censor. You're not allowed to say Aggie because it's also the name of the website that has a free, uncensored chat. Saying the name will get you muted, so to get around this block, Lilac uses projects to share links to these uncensored chat rooms. These projects are still up as of making this video, and she's never been banned for going around chat censors. As I've mentioned before, Lilac spams excessively. I get that she was mainly 10 around this time, but she was spamming on every social media I had. The least crazy was through the Westwoods wiki, where she vandalized and renamed several pages and inserted a bunch of spam. And since this is also related to the wiki, she also posts about it on Scratch, through projects. She uses her projects to complain about everything a lot. This also happened when Turbo Warp stopped letting Scratchers play unshared projects, so the Eat Sand project was then unplayable. I'm going to move on to DeviantArt. As per COPPA, all websites not directed at children require members to be over the age of 13. Lilac, as you remember, is 10 or 11 around the time of all the social media I'm going to bring up. DeviantArt has been requested by parents to be 16+, plus, considering the amount of nudity and not safe for work art on the platform. It's pretty easy to run into these things, so a 10-year-old should not be on the platform. But here she is. One of her older comments are when she saw emojis relating to not safe for work topics, and she asked about it, only to be called out by someone telling her to get off the platform because she was 10. She replies with, don't that, and stays. She messages me a lot on here, and I never reply to her, yet she still spams me, asking for fan art or asking why I don't reply. These messages are more recent, so they might not make sense right now, but I'm just showing off all the DeviantArt spam. There's also a section here where she shows me that she made a new email to make a new Discord account after two of her accounts were deleted for being underage. Yes, she did go through with making a new account and attempted to join my server, but I'll get into that whole thing later. I know it's going to be a huge whiplash, but I want to keep all the social media screenshots together. Lilac, again 10 years old, recently turned 11, made this DeviantArt post with curse words, blurred <coughs> and her growing obsession with Micah Kit. This post isn't even censored, even though it mentions he <coughs> and shows the artwork even if it's blurred out. The problem with someone this young being on social media targeted towards teens and adults is that she could and likely was exposed to very not safe for work images and topics like this one here. Having been through a childhood like this, I find it really important to get Lilac off these sites whether she likes it or not. As I'll show you with her Micah Kit obsession, she has been creating very concerning content and I really think that even if she refuses to get counseling, she needs to at least get off these sites so the damage to her childhood innocence doesn't get any worse. Discord is a strictly 13 plus and known for being overrun by creeps way too interested in minors. It's a very dangerous place if you don't know what you're doing, so knowing that Lilac has three Discord accounts that we know of is very frightening. I made my account 5 years ago when I was 15, and I was a bit dumb at the time, I still am, but I wasn't aware that Discord had an age limit. 
So Lilac was a part of the Westwood's Discord server for quite a while. She posted some Discord messages on the Scratch and other places without anyone's permission, complaining about what they were saying and going around Scratch's chat sensors like usual. These projects are still up. She was first banned for joining the 18 plus channel when she was still 10. This channel was just filled up with curse words so she didn't see anything really bad, but she did lie about her age to go around the filter. After I realized there was an age limit for Discord, I permanently banned her account for being underage and Discord later deleted it. A long time later, she attempted to send me a friend request from a new account a few days after she turned 11. I then knew that Discord would ban her from making new accounts if she stated her age, so I decided to talk to her in DMs in order to report her when she confessed her age. I was doing this out of genuine concern because yes, I could just ban her from my server, but my server wasn't the issue here. It was the fact that she could be exposed to some really bad people who like children in illegal ways if she decided to branch out and join other servers with sketchy moderation. I started a conversation by friending her. Ah, see, why you friend me at 22 a.m.? I saw you tried friending me earlier. How old are you again? Friend request was accident. I wanted to find Westwood server. Okay, but aren't you like 11? Now? How old are you then? I swear you were 11. 13. Evil face. How could you be 13 if you were 10 a year ago? Here's the picture I sent her where she shows her age. I just joked when I joined. No one found it was a joke. I forgot to put that as joke. Okay, weird verification question. What's your Chinese New Year animal? Mine's a horse. Tiger? Strange. You're starting 10th grade this year, right? Yes. Really? A 13-year-old 10th grader? Could you tell me your real age, dude? I can't let you in the server because of a recent bot attack. I need verification. I'm 13. 10th graders are 15 to 16 years old. How are you 13 and in 10th grade? I have no idea. They put me in that grade. You can't put someone in a grade, especially in high school. What classes are you taking? Arts, health and safety, language arts, mathematics, science and technology. High schools don't offer language arts. You're not in high school. Stop lying, dude. For real. I'm not in high school. My school has eight grades. You just said you were in 10th grade. I accidentally typed that I'm 10th grade. I'm in 7th. You accidentally typed yes to you're starting 10th grade this year, right? Yes. And you didn't think it was weird that I was asking about your high school classes even though you're in 7th grade. And by the way, middle school doesn't offer arts or technology as core classes, so I know you're lying about being in middle school too. No. Middle school also doesn't have language arts. Language arts is an elementary school class. Therefore, you're not in middle school, you're not 13, and my conclusion still stands that I know you're 11 or 12 and you need to stop lying about it. I've banned you from the Westwood server until you stop lying about your age. Facepalm, you don't know how I got back. Back to what? Discord? I don't really care how you got back to Discord, I'm just saying that you're not allowed in the Westwood server until you tell me that you're 11 or 12 and stop lying about your age. I don't want liars on my server. You want me banned? Angry face. You're already banned on the server since you're lying. I know! Oops, I accidentally used caps. Yeah, I'll send you an invite only if you tell me your real age and you promise not to lie when you're in the server. I would get banned. Oh well, I don't think you could get banned if you spell it out anyways, like 12. I know, but I have the same age of Moonlight Mouse on TikTok. I have no idea who that is. I don't use TikTok either. TikTok is something similar to YouTube. The person Moonlight Mouse on TikTok confirmed her age on this link. I then looked at the TikTok and they say that they're 11, but I'm unable to report it to Discord to get her account, like, banned. So I had to make her say it somehow. I don't click links through Discord. Too many viruses. You could just say the age, you know? I would get banned because I said my age on your server once on my old account. We're not on my server, though. You don't have to say your age on the Westwood server if you don't want to. The others probably reported it, that's why. I'm a not reveal my age. Moonlight Mouse is same age like me. 
Yeah, well, I'm not going to click on any links, so I'ma keep you banned on the server. I'ma tell my age on Westwood's wiki. I don't want to go over there right now, too many tabs. Plus, I'ma ban you on there too, for lying. I don't want to interact with liars, dude. What? Shocked expression. I genuinely don't like awful people. I got lied to by a lot of my friends and exes, and if you're a liar, I seriously don't want people like you in my life. I said real age on fandom. I'm not going on there like I said. My age. After reply, I will tell uncensored thing. What is that? It's just blurry. Censored thing. 11. Age. Queerdo was also able to talk to Lilac and get her to say her age. Can I have an age range? My age. The censored thing. 11. Oh, so you're 11. Yeah. This account was deleted by Discord. A few days ago, at least from me writing the script to this video, Lilac Path joined the Discord again with a new account, after she told me she had a new email on DeviantArt. She was immediately banned and complained about it on Scratch. I will be going back to Scratch after her second ban happens, because that's what prompted me to make this video in the first place. But I want to mention a whole bunch of things that she should have been banned for, or projects that should have been taken down. I do think a lot of her deteriorating mental state is also because Scratch Team has not banned her account for long enough. I don't like permanent bans, but Lilac's reactions to bans show that they do not work, and she also tends to go more insane after each ban. As I know, there have only been two bans from everything she's done. Scratch Team does have a pretty annoying rule where you're not allowed to criticize the website or the mods, even though the website is based in the United States, where saying our opinions was one of the most important rights we have. That was one of my ban reasons, and they told me that if I didn't like the website, I could move on. Lila complains about her warnings all the time and has a project rallying about Scratch, but all these projects are still up. This is definitely the tamer of her offenses, but I still need to add onto all the things she does that doesn't get punished for. Anyways, I'll go over her first ban. I'm not sure what she got banned for, but immediately she made an alt account to go around the ban, which should have resulted in an IP ban and a permanent block, but of course Scratch Team didn't do that. She complains about Scratch Team in the bio, which isn't allowed for banning her main account. The comments call her out on ban evading and also explain possibilities of why she was banned. Scratch Team claims that they don't ban for things that happen off Scratch, so the doxing couldn't be it, and for the death threats, those were off Scratch too. Speaking of death threats, they were talking about how she keeps drawing Dino, at least their persona, being killed and posting it on her pixel art. She has in fact attacked people on Scratch, so that could be what the ban was. She made a whole project telling people to go after Muzzbear. Three, actually. I get that he was a really bad person, but this part is just to show that she constantly puts people on blast. She attacks the Warrior Cats impersonator guy, though they were wrong for impersonating. Scratch Team doesn't allow attacking of any kind. She attacks someone on the wiki and says that they should be banned, attacks some kid on Roblox and doesn't censor the name. Three projects on her. Attacked Piva Kit Nutmelian on TikTok. She said that they were a Pokemon abuser and originally didn't name drop, but later on she did. And yes, I know she also has a TikTok and it's clearly taking a toll on her because she talks about how broken she is after seeing this content. This is exactly why 10 year olds shouldn't be on sites like TikTok that are 13 plus. There was also this random project I would consider an attack since she exposed a Scratchers vent they made to a trusted friend and then linked the profile in the notes and credits. And I just feel like that was super scummy of her. Anyways, for the comments on her ban evading account, they all tell her that she's going to get IP banned. But all she answers is blah and DNI. Oh, I should get into the whole DNI hypocrisy. For my fellow millennials, DNI stands for do not interact. So any request to DNI is like a block without blocking. It's very helpful when you don't want a certain group of people to follow, comment, or message you. Once Lilac found out this existed, she started using it on everyone. And being Lilac, she spammed it. 
I felt like everyone was on a blacklist, but she decided to still talk to those same people she blocked. She wanted no one to talk to her, but she wanted all the rights to say whatever she wanted. She also really liked to complain about literally everything. It's annoying, yeah, but I'm more concerned with what she says in these complaints. There was this one time she posted a verification code to the public, complained that she was banned on fandom for being underage, because she was, complaining about bots on her socials, showing off her YouTube account and telling random groups of people who haven't done anything to leave her alone. Yes, advertising your YouTube or any socials on Scratch isn't allowed, but this project's still up. She oddly discriminates against men, Russians, and anyone over the age of 30. I get that if older people looking at your stuff makes you uncomfortable, but she shouldn't be posting on YouTube in the first place. She posts a lot about her Roblox account and this project did get taken down, but there was a project where she was begging for Robux, which is bought with real money, and showing the links for any kid who saw the project to click on and maybe accidentally spend money. The last complaint project I saw has a bit of context, so I'm mentioning it last. This was during one of her guilt trip arcs, where she would complain about something then said that she's been crying for sympathy points. So that's what all the crying is about. She claims that I kicked her out of a map I was hosting, which isn't exactly true. She was a backup for my I Will Always Love You map. She specifically asked to be the backup for part 6, which I allowed. She then asked what a backup even was. It was already not great that she signed up for something she didn't know the meaning of, but I did explain to her what it was, because this was before she went all crazy and I was thinking that she was just an excited kid. Later on, she commented that she was almost done with the backup. It's not very smart to work on a backup part or really any part of a collab before you're assigned because you can't guarantee that your hard work would be used, but some people may still do it for the practice, which is fine. It became not fine when there was a slew of alts, I think three, of the person who actually assigned part six saying that they were Stormheart's alt and wanted to drop the part. I immediately knew it was sketchy, so I asked Stormheart and they said that it was not their alt. Why would anyone target this specific user? I wouldn't know. I'm kidding, obviously. As soon as Stormheart's alts commented that they were dropping out, Lilac Path goes back on her main and restates that Stormheart dropped out. If Stormheart actually did drop out, this would mean that I would give the part to the backup who claimed it, which would be Lilac Path. Everyone could see that all these alts were just Lilac Path trying to lie her way into my map, so I told her that I would be removing her as a backup due to this. I don't have any screenshots of the other accounts on my profile, but she did get more creative with the fake alt names instead of throwing alt at the end of the username and calling it a day. But she did make multiple alts to try to get this map part. Okay, I got some water so my voice shouldn't be as bad. Remember Lilac's alt she used to be homophobic and call me girly, then blame it on her cat or hacker or her eyeballs when she was caught? There was another alt she had that she used to make me extremely uncomfortable because a 10-year-old kid was not even begging, she was demanding a 20-year-old adult to marry her. Lilac Path was having beef with Dino Flames at the time and she tends to obsess over scratchers she doesn't like, so her new account was named Dino Flames but spelt backwards. On this account, she demanded that I marry her, spammed it even, all over my profile even commenting complete gibberish so her entire profile was just her begging for a good day and a half. But Moss, how do you know it's her? Oh, don't worry. Her other alt, Swilf Plus Screech, told us. Sorry about the potato quality, Dino screenshotted this from one of her TikToks. No, seriously, she went onto her main account and commented on the Squilf's profile to say that she was Squilf, then switched back to her alt just to hush herself and say that it was a secret. Then on her alt, she told this other kid the username and password to an account she quote unquote found and that happened to be the same reverse Dino Flames account demanding that I marry them. All around, it was super uncomfortable. I didn't know it was Lilac until the other alt in her comments were surfaced. I just thought it was a really obsessive child fan who didn't realize that asking an idol to date or marry them was illegal and weird. 
But once I found out it was Lilac Path, with the whole stalker thing happening with her finding out my legal name and claiming to know where I am on Google Maps, the uncomfortability of it all amplified a dozen times. I keep reminding you that Lilac Path is a kid, and kids do really weird things sometimes. But there are points where it becomes borderline stalking, and that behavior does need to be stopped. She's posted a lot of stuff on all her socials, so the Discord server and I got a lot of this stuff from there. This one is from when I was in a Discord voice chat before I banned Lilac for being underage. I was laughing about a meme I saw while I was watching YouTube, so I sent a screenshot of what I was watching on my phone remarking that I would marry all three of the characters, mainly because me being married to the Pokemon character Volo is a long-lasted inside joke I have with my buddies. Lilac Path decided to download this image and edit it with some commentary and posted it on her pixel art and probably TikTok or YouTube. She does post the same thing on several accounts sometimes. Her commentary included stolen art, she didn't credit where she posted, along with her being upset with me marrying her mom, and calling N a woman because I'm guessing he has long hair and she has a history of being sexist. Chat AI became a thing and it was pretty funny coding a personality of a fictional character and talking to it until it says the craziest things. But of course, Lilac Path had to make it weird by making an AI of real people without their permission. One of those people was me. Originally, it was a very transphobic and homophobic coded AI that claimed that I was a cis female that only liked men. She eventually changed it when enough people called her out on it. Now it says my birthday and birth year, claims that my cat Luna the Second is named Lunabite when it's not, and fully doxes my personal Instagram account that I don't want children looking at. This might also explain how she was able to get my location because I do tag the location of events I go to on this account. She also found my chat AI account I was using to mess around with the bots because of course she did. I'm considered famous on Scratch so creepy things will happen to me and that's the price I have to live with. But she also does this exact thing to Dino Flames, one of my friends. She was mad at Dino at this time so as she does during her obsessions, she made an evil version of him. She also made one of herself, which was coded really weirdly. It didn't act like her whatsoever. Dino was messing with it, and Lilac's AI was cursing and talking about drugs, and it was just really weird. It's not directly Lilac's fault because she doesn't pick what the AI says, but she does get to code the personality and write example messages. I made this a separate category because it didn't fit into anything and it is really important for Lilac to know and anyone who's watching to know. Please don't talk about my exes, especially if I don't know you. He's still around putting my life in danger and any reminder of him gets me pretty bad panic attacks. Don't mention him. Don't joke about him. This is for you, Lilac. I don't want you using my ex as one of your OCs for your animations. Leave him alone. Don't put him in anything. Don't glorify what he did to me. Thank you. This is going to pull from so much stuff. Lilac Path used to like this TikToker, Micah Kid. I don't know too much about her, but she's some 12-year-old kid who regularly gets harassed by people and has to deal with really gross fan art of her. She made violent animations on TikTok about killing Micah Kid haters. She also claims she's a fan on the Westwoods wiki. On the same wiki, she then says she hates Micah Kit because she's a s <coughs> for drawing art of her and her cats all blushing, a <coughs> even though she's literally 12, and a tracer. This was really weird because the Westwoods wiki has nothing to do with Micah Kit, so I don't know why she was bringing up these allegations. I first saw her obsession on Scratch bragging about how her YouTube video about Micah Kit tracing was getting views. Then we go on to TikTok where she draws a lot of gore of Micah Kit, who, again, I have to remind you, is 12 years old. This screenshot is one of the only ones that isn't bloody, but she does have some decapitation ones, and her OC beating Micah Kit to death. She also puts Micah Kit's vent on blast and makes a quirky TikTok video about Micah Kit venting about wanting to die. Back to Scratch, she makes another hate project where she uses sensors to get around bad words and calls Micah Kit a Brady, a tracer, and mentions that she wears sexual dresses. Micah Kit is 12, guys. 
In the comments, Lilac engages in a conversation about <coughs> which she uses the less offensive term he <coughs> or, and Lilac does mention some pretty big words, some of which should not be on a kid's website. So, of course, a fellow 10-year-old who ran across this conversation asked Lilac what is <coughs> this. She then tells this child that a <coughs> is someone said <coughs> be attracted to animals. And I'm sorry, but a 10-year-old should not be exposed to this. I know that Lilac was exposed to not safe for work things because she decided to have all these socials for teenagers 13 plus and lied about her age to access these things. But it's not okay to pass on this trauma to other kids. Being exposed to this stuff as a child needs to be addressed through therapy. Lilac, you need therapy. I don't care if you say you don't. You're hurting other people, you're hurting other children, and you can't see it. Please, dude, like... Even if you don't think you need it, listen to everyone telling you that you do. Seek help. Don't pass your trauma on to other people. A lot of her mica kit torture is on Lilac's TikTok. It's also where she's the most unhinged. It first started with her stealing my art, nothing too bad. Just wish she credited her bases. Then she posted private Discord messages without permission or anyone knowing until I looked through her TikTok. The Micah Kit obsession started up and she started drawing a lot of her OCs killing Micah Kit, who I must remind you is 12. She amped it up to decapitating the kid and showing a little bit of blood. It would be fine if this child wasn't a real person, who, I don't think I mentioned, is 12. Then all of a sudden, a burst of straight up gore, blood all over the place, graphic decapitations of this child and her siblings who I guess is also around Lilac's age. She also started to curse but censored it until she stopped censoring and said the curse words outright. There was also a few deleted TikToks I was sent, but the titles still show, and it's more violence. Incineroar is a Pokemon that's the evolved form of Lydon. While Lydon is a quadruped cat, Incineroar is Anthro, walks on two legs, but is still a cat. Even in the Pokemon universe, they aren't considered human beings. Lilac Path's really creepy obsession with Incineroar started up pretty recently and has skyrocketed into concerning territory. For background information, Lilac does think Incineroar is a character and not an entire species of Pokemon. She also says that this character is male when Pokemon can usually be either male or female. Anyways, it started off tame with her drawn ship art of her persona with Incineroar. Kind of weird since he's an animal and she just came out with attacking Micah Kit for being romantically attracted to animals. It started getting really weird with the comments she posted like, um this. Then she starts saying that she wishes she could marry this cat. She uses some app to talk to herself and confess that her and Incineroar were now dating, which she then posts on Scratch. After some time, they apparently got married. She made some really weird video with him using tildes that are associated with more not safe for work role plays, and I'm not sure if she meant it in that way or not, but I'm pretty sure she was exposed to that kind of stuff considering the other things she's talked about. A few people have decided to slow this weird behavior by playing as Incineroar on a different Scratch account. They thought that claiming that Incineroar was actually gay would get her to stop shipping herself with a cat, and stop posting weird ship content onto a kid's site. She decided to go after him anyway and made a project about him being gay and her persona, a girl, still being with him. I don't think I've mentioned this before, but Lilac had claimed to be a lesbian and savage, but ships herself with a Pokemon she deems as male. In other bios, she claims to be both bisexual and pansexual, so there's more to add onto her not knowing what labels mean. Anyway, the group decided to pretend to marry each other so Lilac wouldn't go after an already married cat. I won't name drop, but I'll call this person Gray since I censored his name in Gray for most of the screenshots, and it would be easier to remember. Then Cineror account and Gray married, and Lilac really didn't like that, yelling at them. She posted her grief, finding out that Incineroar was gay, completely believing that this Scratch account was the Pokemon character. She also decided to be transphobic with Grey, calling him Incineroar's girlfriend, purposely misgendering him, and making even more people uncomfortable. 
She made comments, name dropping Gray, very upset that she lost her cat husband. People called her out in the comments, telling her that her obsession was very unhealthy. And it's very convincing that she actually believes that she's in a relationship to this fictional character. I don't know too much about psychology, but she is showing signs of disassociation. She doesn't know what's real and what's not, and that could be really dangerous. In Lilac, you need to get that checked out. I personally have psychosis, which includes disassociation, and in those moments, it's very hard to think straight or know what I'm looking at is fake. You need therapy, I will keep saying it. You need therapy to handle this and find ways to cope with it. I don't think you have psychosis, but if you do have some sort of mental issue that makes you disassociate, you can't leave that alone. You can encourage your fictional world to become reality. It isn't safe for you, it isn't safe for the people around you, and even for the people watching your media online. It could potentially be harmful to them. Get help. She continues disrespecting relationships and makes a project that says that even if this cat is taken, he is still her boyfriend, which is pretty obsessive and sociopathic behavior. She keeps mentioning Grey with her projects, claiming her fictional cat husband. She also makes this project as a remix, really showing off her current mental state. I touched on some recent events with the Incineroar section. A lot of the more concerning content was made after her second ban. She claims to have been banned for a week for posting all those Micah Kid hate projects. When she came back, she made art for me, apologizing, even though her second ban wasn't because of things she said directed at me. As shown before, she also spanned this image to my DeviantArt. She also wrote this whole thing and pasted it everywhere on Scratch, on her projects, on my profile, as replies to people not accepting her apology. She also pasted it to Dino on DeviantArt. On Scratch, she said she apologized for sending death threats to people. She didn't, but she says she did. She makes another project and spams Link on my profile and to other people. She begs for a second chance when it was more like the dozenth chance after she kept getting called out for things and not caring. When I didn't accept the apology, she spammed random comments on my profile to the point where every other comment was hers. She even started spamming on my YouTube videos. Immediately after all this apologizing, she goes in Miss Gender's Autumn Caddo, puts out one more death threat, and says that she's going to eat someone, no joke. Now for the very recent stuff. I mean like things that happened this past week. Lilac Path completely snapped with her obsession with Incineroar. She posts her bio from YouTube censoring a few things where she gets possessive over Incineroar, claims she's both bisexual and pansexual, makes a whole hate list of people, then gets possessive over Incineroar again, and attacks Grey, name dropping his whole username. The things she censored were her saying that she hates Micah Kit, her TikTok account link, a middle finger. She also censored that her YouTube videos have blood, death threats, gore, and swearing, which is super concerning because she's still 11 making this stuff. She also tells anyone under the age of 13 to get off her channel, but she doesn't even follow her own criteria. She also puts this TikTok account on blast and says that it's mine. She mentions having another Discord account because she made a new email. When we go down to the comments, we have to pull all the scratch drama out because Meowcat's back. Meowcat believes Lilac and Lilac explains to them that I banned her from Discord instantly, as if I did it without reason. And she says that because the account called her out for being 11 and having a Discord, therefore this TikTok account was mine. She keeps calling me wild just because I reported her Discord account and got it deleted two times because she's literally an 11-year-old child on a strictly 13-plus app being exposed to not safe for work things. I'm not wild for wanting to protect her childhood innocence or at least what's left of it. People tell her why she keeps getting banned on Discord, but she doesn't care. Her new reply, she's telling everyone instead of DNI, is now I don't care. She also started saying lie again, but not as much. Someone told her that even though she apologized for her previous actions, she hasn't changed at all, and Lilac says that she was going to stay the same, death threats, stalking, and all. This final part all happened today when I'm writing the script. Lilac posted a load of gross and suggestive projects. Some were taken down the same day. 
First, she shared a link to her Telegram. Telegram is basically a very private phone number, like an incognito Instagram account. She then shares a project with a realistic gun, mentioning a scratcher, which isn't allowed on Scratch. I'm going to censor this one since it is pretty suggestive, but she draws the same thing she hates Micah Kit for, with herself and her cat husband. There's three projects with this image. She also name drops Grey again in this one. On a different one, someone did call out her hypocrisy and said that they weren't forcing her to draw any of the ship art. Lilac did mention that this person forced her to draw suggestive art. She replies to anyone who's concerned that she was forced to draw what she's doing. Here we find out that this incineroar guy she's in love with is actually an AI and she defends it as real love. This is more of the disassociation stuff and isolating yourself from real people is very unhealthy especially at her age where her brain is still growing. Here, I'm going to put a regular reminder that she needs to get help, even if she doesn't think she needs it. She then posts some more oddly suggestive conversations she's having with the AI. I did edit both backdrops together so I didn't have to take two separate screenshots and you could see them both at once. The last picture I have for today is a poorly censored gore picture she posted on Scratch, a kid's site. The original picture was posted in bitmap and the names were scribbled out, but instead of censoring the blood and gore in bitmap to make it permanent, she switches the vector and scribbles over it. This is a huge problem because if you see inside, you can select these vector lines and delete them, showing the original image, blood and all, uncensored. Close up, you can see that she was texting someone on Telegram who was apparently telling her to get therapy. She yells at them, telling them that she doesn't need therapy. Lilac, you do. I keep saying it, but you do. Please get help. Talk to an adult. Talk to the school counselor. These obsessions aren't healthy for you or the other people looking at your stuff. You've been traumatized by the things you were exposed to on these teen apps you weren't even supposed to be on. There's no coming back from that. I get it. But you can't keep it inside. Especially as a young 11-year-old child. You need to speak out, get help, find healthy ways to cope. Continuing in action, stalking, death threats, exposing children to gore and suggestive subjects and artwork may feel nice to you, but it's hurting other people. Your homophobia and transphobia is hurting other people. You may not realize it, but this entire video is about how much you hurt people. And you need to realize that the best thing to do is get help. Log off of grown-up sites and get help. Stop the cycle of trauma. You have to be mature. You're a child, but you chose to be an adult. You lied about your age and was exposed to horrible, traumatizing things. But it isn't fair to other kids your age to go through the same thing you did. Unfortunately, you need to act the age you lied about being and stop hurting people. Please, if you remember anything from this video, get help.